Okay, I think we're ready to go. Excellent. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today, which is a welcome to the SDS2 2025 version and looking at its performance at its best. Today presenting will be myself and my colleague David Zabka. I'll pass it back to him real quick to introduce himself. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy to be here this morning. Excited to be here this morning to present uh, what we have new coming up in 2025. So uh, a lot of you probably know who I am, but for those who are not familiar, I've been around here with SDS2 for quite some time. Uh, I've done everything from technical support to sales to technical consulting, and now uh, I'm on the product management side. So uh, very excited, very happy to you know be in the position that I'm in to to bring you guys new fun and, and exciting stuff. So, Caitlin? Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Caitlin Metcalf. Um, I work alongside David. I haven't been with SDS2 quite as long as he has. That's a hard, hard number to match. Um, but I've been around for about three years now, and I am a structural engineer myself. Uh, so I work very closely with Colin and the SDS2 engineering team as well as David and the rest of the development team to kind of help um, enhance and move forward any of the specific engineering features in SDS2. But yeah, we're very excited to bring some of these new features to you today. So let's go ahead and get started. Our next slide is just a quick overview mm -hmm. of the agenda of what we're going to be talking about today. We'll start jumping right in, talking about some of the new feature improvements, um, starting with connection improvements, then we'll get into some of the home screen user experience updates that we've recently made, some saved material operations updates that have been made. Then, of course, talk about some other general improvements that don't fit into any of these specific categories. We'll talk about some upcoming changes to the additions of SDS2 and then some new toolbox functionality as well. But we'll go ahead and get started with the connection improvements. So we're excited to share these with you. The development teams have been really hard at work implementing these. Um, and so we really look forward to sharing them with you as soon as you get into it, hopefully a little bit later on today. Um, the first listed here is our, our updates to the forced connection functionality. So that this forced checkbox, which is um, here on the connection end settings for the members. This checkbox will now allow forced connection material on all connections that previously failed due to unsupported materials, load types, and member orientation. Turning this on will allow you to ignore the failure message and keep connection material modeled on the members. While you'll not get any design calculations for these member ends, you will see the initial warning messages to explain why it failed um, any of the SDS2 code checks. This applies to all beam, column, and joist connections, as well as vertical brace connections when the beam to column connection is fully welded. Now, though that is an overview of a lot of connection types, so we've tried to summarize a little bit more clarity of what specific connection types have been improved with this new force connection functionality on this next slide. 